Hey guys, I build a lot of antennas, especially vertical antennas. And I, I put videos out on a lot of different antennas and I get a lot of great questions. And I, I sometimes catch myself kind of when I put these videos together, um, assuming a lot that people know a lot of what I'm talking about. And I apologize because for a new ham who's never built an antenna before, you're just getting started. Some of the terms and, and, and phrases and things that I may use in my videos, um, it, it may confuse you a little bit. So I want to put this video together, kind of give you a quick anatomy of building your first vertical antenna. Then I'll give you some tips and pointers, I think, that'll get you up and running and really let you build a successful vertical HF antenna. Stick around. Okay, so let's talk about the anatomy of a vertical HF antenna. What is all? What makes up a vertical HF antenna? It kind of gets you started to make your first vertical HF antenna yourself. Well, it all starts with driven element. People go, what is a driven element? Pretty simple. That is the vertical wire going up, or radiating element, as we may call it, that's coming straight up, taped to a pole, Whatever it takes to get it up and get it vertical, that is the driven element of a HF vertical antenna. This is also measured out, like you say, if someone says, I want to build a 29-foot vertical or a 17-and-a-half-foot vertical, or for that matter, a quarter-way vertical. Let's just say you're building a quarter-way vertical. I'm not going to go in depth on how to measure that out. There are apps out there. There are other videos I have, but you have a wire that's, let's just say, for 20 meters, it would be a quarter wavelength long which is about 16 feet 4 inches or 5.01 meters long. And that goes, that is your driven element. Now, people go, you can build one of them simply with, uh, this is a banana plug. It's something that you can build. Uh, let me put this down. You put, build your antenna with that. That goes on the positive or the red side of the banana plug, your wire. There's your driven element there. That is the upper half of the, of the antenna. From there... We have feed point. People go, what is the feed point? That's here. That's where your coax goes and meets the driven element and the rest of your antenna. Now, this is a B and C uh, plug for a, for a B and C antenna. I also, and I would highly recommend you consider getting a bunch of adapters. This is a B and C to SO239 adapter. And then, boom, there you go. So now I could put, if, let's just say I have a... PL239 on the end of my of my coax, PL meaning plug 239, SO meaning socket 239, I can put them together. So that's for a simple quarter wave vertical driven element to feed point, feed point from the coax. Now what's this for? This is for your RF ground or counterpoise wires or radials and um that is what goes here when people ask what side where do i put the radials they go on the negative side of this now also i mean we also a lot of people we talk about um unons this is a nine to one unon same thing there if i was building what's what's called a random wire antenna the red side the positive side as you can even see right here it's that stands for in fed long wire but uh that is where your driven element goes your Counterpoise wires or radials go on the negative side. As you can even see, that's a ground symbol there. It's not a ground per se like an electrical ground, though. It's a little different. That's RF ground, which is the surface underneath it for your antenna. Got some videos out on that as well. I'll, uh, I'll Maybe I'll put a link to some of my other antenna building uh, videos as well. Kind of just want to go over some of the simple terminology first because I get these questions a lot, and um, I want to kind of, this is kind of the, 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 the primer or primer to get you going to starting. I, I want to refer back to this video for a first-time builder and that. So we've got the uh, driven element. We've got the feed point. We've got counterpoise wires. Now, a lot of people ask me, how many counterpoise wires do I put down? What do I do? Um, if I start at four, four or five, and put them down. Length, if they're on the ground or on the surface of the ground, it's not that important. Um, yeah, there's going to be some people that tell you you need to put X amount of wires down or whatever. First antenna, you're getting started. You're experimenting. You want something to get down and see if it'll work. Start with four or five wires. I usually spread them out somewhat around the driven element. Let's just say five, four or five of them. And I make them 
I personally, I'll just cut them around 17 feet. I, I They could be a little shorter. They could be longer. You can have four or five of them that are three or four feet long or, you know, whatever that comes out a meter, a meter, a meter and a half, two meters long. And then you could have some that are 16, 17 feet long, around five meters. And uh, try to get them as spread out around it as you can. People go, what if I can only fit them on one side? That's great. Do that. It's not going to make your antenna directional, but it will you will have less gain in the direction that you don't have counterpoise wires than the side that you do. It's still, it's all, get what you can get down and do it. Don't overthink that. This is your first antenna. I would say simply four or five, 17 foot or a little over five meter long wires, lay them on the ground, put them on the negative side, the black side of, of, the, of, a, of the joint. And there you go. Now you have your complete antenna system there. You have the driven element. You're, you're on a pole. You have your feed point. You have your coax. One thing we also have to talk about is choke. What about a choke? What does a choke do? Well, chokes are there. If you don't put a choke at the feed point, all those radials that you have, the counterpoise wires, the outer skin of your coax is also going to act like one of those as well. And you might get some RF and some noise back up into the radio. Now, there are different types of chokes. I've got some videos out on that as well, but I've currently been using uh it's like a ferrite bead type choke it's a built-in to the coax that i have you could put a there's a one-to-one -one choke transformers that you could purchase as well i've used those as well there's a lot of different ways choking at the feed point will prevent the coax the outer uh, wrap of your coax from being one of your ground radials some people want that i mean i know if you use a infed half wave what I would do is I plug it in there and then I put the the choke all the way back at the radio, at the transceiver, to keep it, to choke it there, to keep that RF energy from getting into my radio at that point. And it adds, gives me more of a counterpoise there at the bottom. So that's basically the setup and terminology of, of a vertical HF antenna. Now, some tips and pointers. A um, few things that you need. Um, an antenna tool, a little antenna stripper, wire, whatever you want to call it, wire stripper or whatever. These things are cheap. You can get them for nothing. Definitely need a tape measure. I, I would highly recommend if you get a tape measure, get one that's both, in the, if you're in the States, they're imperial or metric. That way when you're measuring it, you can double check. Like if I know that I want to do 16 feet, 4 inches, I can go to that and then check it with knowing what the metric uh, equivalent of five, 500 and uh, 5,010 millimeters or whatever. I could check it and look right there on the tape. Okay, I got it. That's that's the right. But um, and if you're a uh, you know a real smart person and, and better at uh, measuring than us Americans, just use meters. And the, the metric system is so easy. If you're a ham radio operator, I highly recommend kind of start thinking and doing in the metric system. I mean, the bands are 20 meters, 30 meters. 10 meters, 15 meters, everything is in metric and it makes it a lot easier for you. But um, that's a couple tools and then a cheap electrical tape. This is what I use. I tape this to a pole. My favorite pole, I have a DX Commander 10 meter pole. To build a simple quarter wave, you don't need that. You could get a simple five meter fishing pole and put it up on that. But um, just tape the wire to the pole. That's another question I get, but won't that interfere? No, and don't worry about carbon fiber, fiberglass, whatever. Tape the wire to the pole. You'll be up and running. Yeah, there may be some loss here or there with carbon fiber. You won't notice it. It's that it's not a lot of loss, especially if you're, you know, 20 to 100 watts. You're not going to, that loss will be minimal uh, for sure and do that. So that's a few things. Another tip, uh, something I, I like to do when measuring a wire, I always measure 25 millimeters longer for the verticals that I make. Now, some people will go, what about if you're trying to make a resonant antenna? Yeah, you can make it longer on the, uh, what will be the top end too, and trim it and check SWR. I've had some pretty good success just making mine 16 feet, 4 inches or whatever for a 20 meter vertical. But getting back to it, use about 25 millimeters longer. Then you can just take your tool. This is a 22 gauge wire. You can look on here for where a 22 gauge wire is at that point. Put it on and then boom, strip it. There's your wire. Twist this. I know a lot of people go, you need to solder connectors or whatever. No, you don't. And if this is your first antenna and you're experimenting and you're not, you're using it once and then you can perfect it later, do that, put it together. At that point, you can just 
wrap it around, as you see, put it on, tighten her down on that or, or your, you know, your banana clip or whatever, and rock and roll, and the same thing. Another thing, I, I don't know if I mentioned this with the uh, counterpoise wires, a lot of, uh, sometimes you'll get a transformer that won't, that, that doesn't have, here's a good example here, this is a 64 to 1, um, this is for the driven element, and you'll see nowhere can you put a, uh, a, a counterpoise wire on it. What a lot of people do, and I've actually done it as well, is um, where the connector comes in, if you can get a clamp or a clip, and clip your counterpoise wires on the outer part of the connector for the uh, coax, that will give you a, a nice, that, it's the same part of the circuit, it all works there. So you can you can connect your counterpoise wires there as well, and, and that works. And that would be near the feed point, on the feed point side, not below the choke, because then you're choking it out as well. But um, that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's the anatomy of a vertical antenna. Now, I've got a lot of videos, and there's I, I kind of think for the beginner, the quarter wave vertical for, uh, for the 20 meter band is the antenna to start with. It's simple, it's easy. I've found with uh, the measurements that I've used, the 16.4 vertical, that um, SWR has been great. You don't have to do a lot of trimming. It, it works great in the voice section of the 20 meter band, and uh, I've had some great success with that. From there, you can go on. A lot of people, like you said, with a, a 4 to 1 un un, if that being a transformer, 4 to 1 transformer, you can build. The uh, the Ribicoff antenna, or I'll make it nice and simple, a 25 foot vertical or 7.6 meter vertical. Uh, that's a great multi band antenna if you want to start working multi band antennas. Thing with that antenna is you're going to have to have a tuner or an automatic tuner in your radio to use that. Um, from there, you can move on up to 29 foot. I'm kind of going to stop it. 29 is just under 10 meters. I'm going to stop it for a beginner antenna. I don't see you making anything longer than 10 meters high. And then there's a lot of way of supporting that. Um, I've, uh, with mine, I've used uh, different things to put in the ground. Uh, I, for years now, I've been using a beach umbrella uh, support that I just screw into the ground and both the sand. I've used this in regular dirt too. You don't need to be near the shore to use these things. They're great. You screw them in the ground and uh, stick your pole in it and put it up and uh, and it works great. Um, I've also just a piece of PVC tube or uh, here being by the coast, I can get them at tackle shops, a, uh, a surf rod holder, put that into the ground and uh, and then slide the pole inside of that. Uh, that works very well. Also, another thing is uh, take a piece of PVC pipe, screw the cap off the bottom of the uh, the pole. If you're using, say, a 10 meter pole, a big pole, and just slide it on top of a piece of pipe that you've also hammered in the ground. Anyway, there's a few tips and a little bit of terminology that I get asked a lot to get you up and running so you can build a good HF vertical antenna. Listen, you're going to like, the, the only way to get good at these is build build them. Keep building them. Keep trying. Um, get that wire up in the air and experiment. It's You're not going to, if you do it wrong, don't worry. You key the mic, you're not going to rip a hole in the universe. It's all going to be okay. I think we get, we just overthink things sometimes. And the only way to get good, learn, and really have some success at building antennas is by building antennas. So decide which one you want to build. Decide how big you want your driven element to be. Cut that thing, put it up, tape it to a pole, get out there, and let's work some DX. Hope this helps you if you're brand new to ham radio and you're just learning to build antennas. Subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of antenna building stuff here, and I've kind of geared it towards the beginner and, and, and newer hams to get out and build. And I hope you do that. Till next time, I'm Walt K4OGO. Hey, please like and subscribe. See you later, guys. 73.